How's it going everybody? It's Rosine here for Astrophysography and welcome to a new series of the night sky. Starting off of course with January 2025. I hope the end of 2024 went well for you and I also hope that 2025 brings everything that you want and need and have hoped for. If you are new here and wondering what the night sky series is all about, it's a curated list of deep sky targets, be them galaxies, nebulae, star clusters sometimes as well. Anything that I think is interesting to photograph in the night sky, northern hemisphere of that month. Now I have also set out a variety of popular focal lengths, so I've given you targets for a variety of focal lengths from 200 millimeters wide to 2000 millimeters deep field, and they've all been based off of a standard full frame camera. However, if you don't have a full frame camera, don't worry, because I have equivalent focal lengths on the side here. So no matter what equipment you are using, I can almost guarantee that you will find a suggestion matching your equipment on this video. So with all that said, let's get going with deep sky targets and we're gonna start at the 200 to 300 millimeters focal length, which is equivalent to these sizes here. You're looking for the camera you've got and then the camera you've got tells you what focal length to use. So 200, 300 millimeters, we're gonna stick off with a very popular target still around in the night sky at the moment, M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Of course, massive galaxy, Northern Hemisphere, star of the year, right. Very popular target, of course. Great for when you don't have to use filters. So broadband filters like pollution filters, that's okay. If you're in a place where you don't need any filters at all, best result. So 200, 300 millimeters, my suggestion is the Andromeda Galaxy. At 400 millimeters of focal length, I suggest we go over to the constellation of Auriga. And within here, at 400 millimeters, you are going to be able to get the cluster of targets, the Auriga complex, let's say. We are talking about the Flaming Star Nebula, we are talking about the Tadpoles Gap Nebula, and we're also talking about the Spider Nebula as well, all in one frame. All nebulous targets, amazing result for one frame. I love these kind of photographs. So at 400 millimeters, this would definitely be my suggestion to you. At 500 to 600 millimeters of focal length, we're gonna swing over to the constellation of Perseus. And within here, we have NGC 1499, which is of course the California Nebula. Now, if you know anything about me, I love this nebula. I love the shape of it, the look of it. I love the texture of it. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know I was quoting gold member this early in the year, <laughs> starting off strong. But I do love this target. It's great up close, it's great wide field as well. So, you know, if you have 200 millimeters, give this one a go as well. But my suggestion here is the California Nebula. Moving up to 700 to 800 millimeters of focal length. And because it's gonna start waning soon and start setting, why don't we go to the constellation of Orion and show it you know, a bit of a fond farewell. Within here, we have Messier 78, Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula. Now this nebula is like a combination of dark elements as well as reflective elements. So narrowband filters, not really a friend here. You're gonna want broadband imaging, an LPS filter maybe, but the best you're gonna have is getting away from the artificial light into the countryside, into dark skies, and this will be the best situation to image this target. So. At this focal length, M78 is my suggestion to you. At 1000 millimeters of focal length, let's go to the constellation of Gemini because within here we have IC443, which is the jellyfish nebula. This is a wonderful and very obvious where it got its name nebula from. And if you've got good resolution to your telescope, as in you've got a lot of aperture and good guiding, you're gonna get some really intricate details out of this nebula. It is a wonderful target, emission-based nebula, located in the Gemini constellation. At 1,500 millimeters focal length, the penultimate I'm going to talk about, let's go to the constellation of Akens Venetici, and within here we have M106, which I believe has the nickname of the Splendid Galaxy, though in my experience, I've struggled to get a splendid picture out of it. But M106 is a wonderful shaped, good sized galaxy with good amount of detail waiting to be pulled out from a better photographer than I am. So that is my suggestion for one and a half thousand millimeters. Finally, now at 2000 millimeters of focal length, my suggestion to you is M94, still within Ken's Venetici. This is quite a dim face on galaxy, which I don't have the equipment for. I had to get this picture from Telescope Live, but if you have the equipment and you don't mind a bit of a challenge, 
then this is going to be a very rewarding image to take a photo of indeed. Look at it with its detail. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous galaxy. So that is my suggestion at 2000 millimeters for this month. Now, if galaxies and nebulas aren't your bag and you like planetary photography, you're in luck. I'm going to talk to you now about the planets available throughout January. Now, I only really include a planet in this list if it gets above 20 degrees for about, you know, at least two hours. Because underneath 20 degrees altitude, we're in a lot of the thick, you know, sludgy part of the atmosphere. The higher it gets, of course, the clearer the air gets, the better the photo. So to begin with, we have Mars, the red planet itself. That is an option available throughout January. And best still, on the 16th of January, it is at opposition, which basically means the sun is here, Earth is here, Mars is here. So it's all in line. Mars is opposite to the sun. It's going to be the most illuminated and the largest it's going to be in its orbit. So definitely a good time to photograph Mars. If Mars doesn't take your fancy, we of course have Jupiter. That's an option available as well. And as we move more and more superior out from Earth, we have Uranus as an option to take a photograph as well. Gonna need long focal lengths, a lot of resolution to take a photo of that. And if that sounds too easy for a win for a brief time throughout this month, we also have Neptune available to take a picture of. So there's your four planets to pick from. If you prefer something a bit more local and like taking photos of the moon or wanna know when to get the hydrogen alpha filters out, here are the lunar phases for January. The first quarter is gonna fall on the 6th of January. The full moon is on the 13th of January. The last quarter is the 21st of January. And the new moon is the 29th of January. Now, this month's full moon is known as the wolf moon. It got its name from Native American tribes as well as the Middle Eve, medieval Europeans when they would hear the wolves howling through the night of this month. It's speculated they were howling in hunger because from the midwinter and the winter time, the food gets more and more scarce. The wolves get hungry and they howl because of it. Hence its name, the wolf moon. It is also known as the ice moon because January is still in winter and the London Almanac refers to it rather lazily as the moon after Yule because we're really imaginative here in the United Kingdom. And to round off this month, we have a meteor shower to talk about, and that is the Quadrantids. It started last year on the 26th of December, and it's gonna run up to about 12th of January, hitting, hitting its peak on the 4th of January. Now we're gonna have the first quarter moon around, but that shouldn't really bother us too much because that's going to set, and the quadrinids are still gonna be out to play. We can expect blue, whitish, yellowish meteors with very fine trails and a rate of about 120 meteors uh, an hour. So get those wide angle lenses out, get those long exposures out and take some photos of a meteor shower, have fun with it. And finally, before we wrap up, another thing I'm gonna be doing this year is I've got my website back. I finally have my website back and I've rebuilt it and I'm gonna be adding to it. So all throughout this year, when I'm doing the Night Sky videos, I'll also be adding posts to the Night Sky website. So if you want to quickly re-reference what I'm talking about, go there, astrophotography.com or astrophotography.co.uk slash the night sky, and you'll see the collection throughout the year being added to each month. As well as that, if you want to keep up with anything else I'm doing, my pictures, blogs, anything like that, a world of astrophotography, lays on my website and i'd love to see you there as well and that is it that is january all done and that is the start of the year thank you so much for watching i hope you found something interesting in this video let me know what your what your idea is give it a thumbs up if you liked it give it a thumbs down if i could have done better and consider subscribing for more videos like this there'll be one night sky every month thank you very much for watching hope you have clear skies keep looking up keep them cameras clicking i'll see you later